Hey there everyone, this is Danielle with some more Ace Attorney Trilogy. Uh, we're up to Rise from the Ashes Day 3 Trial Former. Uh, and the date is February 24th, 9.41am, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Let's go! So, what do you think, Mr. Wright? I think the prosecution is as confused as we are. After all... The victim was murdered in two different places at the same time. And a different suspect was arrested at each of the crime scenes. Lana! Good morning, Mr. Wright. I apologise for yesterday. I was indisposed. I hope it didn't hold too long for questioning. We just finished, actually. I'm used to all-nighters, though. So how'd it go? As Mr. Wright suspects, the police are clueless. I figured as much, so I struck a plea bargain. A plea bargain? What do you mean by that? We agreed that if I told them the truth behind this simultaneous murder, they wouldn't seek capital punishment. That's what I mean, Eva. But Lana! Don't tell me you... Much to my regret. I'm as much in the dark about this as they are. Miss Sky. Hmm? We're trying to trace evidence of a certain person in the police department's evidence room. They belong to Officer Jake Marshall. What kind of trace evidence? Bloodstained fingerprints, to be exact. That's the trump card I have up my sleeve today. You do understand what this means, don't you? In order to defend my sister, you're going to accuse Mr. Marshall? We have to play the cards we're dealt. Isn't that right, Miss Guy? Do what you have to do, Mr. Wright. February 24th, 10 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number nine. Sorry about that. Courtroom number nine. Court is now in session for the trial of Ms. Lana Skye. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is... Hmm. Hmm? I'm afraid you'll have to clarify. It takes 30 minutes by car to reach the police department from the prosecutor's office. Yet the victim, Bruce Goodman, was slain at both places at the same time. But that's not physically possible, is it? What's more, I hear the victim from the evidence room just disappeared. Yes, and the body eventually reappeared in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. Wow. This is one messed up trial. One of my duties as prosecutor is to present impartial evidence. Today I'll present evidence relating to the murder at the police department. In so doing, I believe the way in which we should proceed will reveal itself. Now that's what sets Mr. Edgeworth apart. He sounds so on top of things. Even though he doesn't know what's going on himself. And that's supposed to be an admirable trait. Very well, the trial resume. On the day of the crime, what exactly transpired at the police department? Mr. Edgeworth, you may call your first witness of the day to the stand. For its first witness, the prosecution calls suspect of the murder that occurred at the police department. The suspect? You mean the so-called murderer? <laughs> yeah, this is news. I've done this before. Oh boy. Things are getting wild from the get-go. The, the, they called the suspect in the very first case of the game. Like, this isn't weird. Will witness please state his name and occupation? Y yes, sir. I'm Officer Mike Meekin, sir. My occupation is, um... That would be murderer, sir! Uh... So you're telling us you're a professional killer? Sir, it was me, sir. I'm the one who did it. I'll never kill anyone again, sir. You've got to believe me, sir! Uh, actually, what we'd like to hear from you is... Sir, I'm what you would call part of the younger generation, sir. A person whose actions adults can't possibly comprehend. Please, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. Help me, sir. <laughs> Officer Meekins. 
Y yes, sir. Give us your report of the crime. Consider that an order. Yes, sir. As you wish. After all, the entire generation must do be told what to do, sir. <laughs> you can't fault him for a lack of enthusiasm. Crime report, sir. <laughs> Although it's not my normal duty, I was assigned to guard the evidence room that day. I spotted a suspicious man in the security screen and rushed into the room. I was only doing what I was trained to do, sir. I was suddenly attacked. I fought for my life, then I... I did it. After that, I passed out. Until another officer smacked me awake. Hmm. So the victim, Detective Goodman, attacked you? Do unto others before they do unto you. That's the Meekins family motto, sir. I see. Then you fainted, and a colleague helped you regain consciousness. Yes, sir. He knocked me upside the head, sir. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. What I need here is more info to work with. So, yeah, Phoenix is hinting that we should be pressing, so let's get pressing. Hold it! Hold it. Mr. Meekins, you work in the General Affairs Department, do you not? Yes, sir. I'm in charge of hiring new recruits, sir. Yikes. Now there's a scary thought. Evidence transfer was taking place on the day of the crime, which meant many officers were given special tasks not ordinarily performed. I was in charge of guarding the Blue Badger, sir. The Blue Badger? Yes, sir. The lovely police mascot created by the Chief of Detectives, sir. I was to ensure it wasn't broken during the transferal process. That was my sole mission for the day, sir. I see. Sounds like a very uh, important mission. After the award ceremony finished that day, there were so many people running around that I relocated the Blue Badger to the evidence room. Oh, so that's why you went to the evidence room. Tell us, what did you see when you got there? In order to enter the evidence room, you need an ID card, am I correct? Precisely, sir. I have one right here around my neck. So then, your ID number should be listed on here, right? There it is! I found it! This is the one right here. Could you please read us the number? Yes, sir. It's 49895596. That's my number, sir. I see. Huh? Number 49895596. Is shown as being used twice. Please explain, witness. It's n no real mystery, sir. The first time is when I relocated the blue badger to the evidence room, and the second time is when I went to get him, go get him after everything settled down. I see. So it was during that second time when. Yes, sir. That was when I spotted the man on the security screen. Data added to ID card records. So you were, you were attacked. Can you please tell us exactly what happened to you? It was a knife, sir. A knife! Detective Goodwin pulled a knife on you? What happened then? Well, with me charging in on him like that, he looked as surprised as I was. You aren't exactly the kind of person someone would want to run into. That's when I reacted, sir. I swung my arms like an octopus, struggling to detain him. Oops. That's my badge. <laughs> That's how I got this gash in my hand. Maybe if you just kept your cool, your hand wouldn't be... When I saw the blood trickling down my arm, I panicked. I grabbed the man by his collar. I fought for my life, then I... I did it. Hold it. What exactly do you mean when you say you... did it? I know I don't look the type, but I'm really into kung fu films, sir. The man let his guard down this an instant, so I snatched his knife from him. His knife. I spun him around and performed the disarming maneuver. I made sure to close my eyes like a man. I uh, see. 
He must have been desperate. The next thing I knew, his white coat was drenched in a sea of my blood, and then... Then, the next thing I knew... Yes? He punched me right in my face, sir. About what time did you regain consciousness? No offense, sir, but how am I supposed to know that? I was unconscious. <laughs> oh. Right. According to a report from the officer that woke up the witness, it was about 5.30. He hit me right in the head, too. I woke up crying tears of pain. That's nice. Uh, I mean, it's nice that you recovered, that is. When I came around, I made sure to finish my mission, sir. Your mission? Yes, sir, the blue badger, sir. I returned him to the entrance before things got out of hand. Well, we can all rest easy now. I believe I have a fairly accurate picture of what happened. Yes, Your Honor. Only one thing remains unclear. Was the man this officer murdered really the victim? He's got a point. Um... Yes, Officer Meekins? With regard to that, sir... Take a look at this. It was sent to my jail cell. Chief Gant delivered it to me just this morning, sir. The Chief? Delivered it? What is that? A uh, videotape? Yes, that is a VHS cassette. <laughs> this is so dated. Yes, sir. It's absolutely right, sir. A videotape, sir. It contains footage from the security camera in the evidence room. Objection! What? But I specifically asked if there was such a tape, and was told it had been mistakenly erased. That's quite a mistake. I just do what I'm told, sir. It's the only thing I'm really good at. Looks like communication with the police department is as good as ever. Hey, cab. Well done, let's have a look. Show us the video of you murdering the victim. Oh. Please stop using that word, murder, sir. It scares me. Aww. A video of a real murder. Just what are we getting ourselves into? I hope you really enjoy this video. We're going to see a lot of it. <laughs> they didn't improve the quality at all from the original version of the game. I thought they might have done. But this is how it looked originally. It's really awful. A bit sort of VHS, so it's not in colour, so it makes sense. You can see the scan lines. <laughs> I can't actually skip through this or anything, I just have to watch it. It's great fun. I'm have to watch it more than once as well, so I hope you enjoy this. <laughs> the blue badger was carefully designed to conceal the face of any possible mysterious person, apparently. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, that's the end of the video, and there's our fellow who's been knocked out, Ed Meekins. Very sad. And that's the end of the video. Almost. Mm, there you go. Well, I believe we're all thinking the same thing. How can we deal with these unsettling feelings stirring within us? What the hell was that wriggling piece of plywood? Sir, that is the pride and joy of the entire Criminal Affairs Department, sir. It's the Blue Badger, sir. Just like any cop, the Blue Badger tries to conceal what's going on. <laughs> Why am I not surprised this isn't, this isn't going smoothly? Security video added to the court record. Yes, well anyway. This tape seems to prove that the witness did indeed encounter uh, someone in the evidence room. And some sort of uh, activity did, did take place. Your Honor, instead of relying on clearly incomplete footage, the witness's testimony will suffice. Is that alright with you, Officer Meekins? Yes, sir. As you wish, sir. Aw, as you wish. We all know what that phrase means. Aw. Mystery man. His face can't be clearly seen in the video, but there's no question that the other person was Detective Goodman, sir. 
and then he opened the locker, which required Detective Goodman's fingerprint to do. The locker he opens unquestionably Detective Goodman's locker, sir. So it must be him. No one else could have unlocked it. Was this about a fingerprint? Each detective has been given a locker equipped with a fingerprint activated lock. These locks ensure that each lock can only be opened by the detective it belongs to. Intriguing. That would mean... The victim at the crime scene would have had to have been Detective Goodman. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. I don't know where this cross-examination will lead, but everything begins with contradictions. That's where I have to start. Alright, so there was a contradiction in the video footage, because, uh... We're gonna just bring the footage back up. Like I said, we're gonna be looking at this a lot, so I hope you enjoy it. We can't fast forward it yet, which is annoying. Uh, you can see that the light above Detective Goodman's locker is on already at the beginning of the video, which means that the locker is already unlocked. Which means you wouldn't need a fingerprint to unlock it. So, we're just gonna eject here. There we go. Regarding the video contained on this tape, there is one thing in particular that seems rather strange. Strange? This contradiction leads to the possibility that... The man may not have been Detective Goodman. What? This video contains such contradiction? Objection! Interesting. Your Honor, I have a proposal. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth? I propose we have the defense point out to us this alleged contradiction in the video. He would want me to point it out. I mean, that's pretty reasonable. Very well, proposal accepted. Let us further inspect this piece of evidence. I will now play the security tape. Mr. Wright, please show us this contradiction you speak of. I have to point out a problem in the video? This is the first time I've ever had to do that. You can do it, Mr. Wright. It's set up so you can fast forward, rewind, or pause the video. Just take a good look and be sure to point out the right thing. Please don't play it too many times. Uh, I can't stand watching this video. How did this guy ever become a police officer? It's a really good question. Surely he knows that ACAB. Now then, Mr. Wright, please enlighten us. Where is the contradiction that indicates the man may not be Detective Goodman? Okay, so we have access to controls now. In the DS version, these were like buttons on the touch screen. Here it's just uh, Y, B, A, etc, etc. So we want to pause and just point this out like this. Easy peasy. The thing that's strange about this video has got to be this. Officer Meekins. Sir, d do you mean me, sir? As I understand it, the locker app apparatus works like this. When you grab the handle, a sensor reads your fingerprint. If it's a match, the light turns on and the locker is released. Uh, according to my very limited experience, that's the way I, un I understand it, sir. If so, then something is seriously wrong with this picture. I hope you like this video over and over again. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't re-render it in higher resolution for this version. Maybe they didn't have the original stuff to do it with. It showed on the bottom screen on the 3DS, which is the lower resolution one. And I imagine this is probably why... When the victim reaches for the handle to open the locker, let's rewind a little earlier. Hope you enjoy watching this clip over and over again in various directions. Here, notice the light? What's this? It's already lit. Hello lit. Precisely my point, Your Honor. The locker was already open before the victim grabbed the handle. Ah! Order, order! What's the meaning of this? It's very simple, Your Honor. The locker wasn't locked on the day of the crime. But the locker locks are controlled by an electronic system. When a door is shut, a sensor is triggered. And the locker is automatically locked. Oh, I know, it must have broken down. Of course, I'm not an expert in this. That's not likely, Your Honor. The sensor would detect and report any malfunction. Oh well, just goes to show novices should keep their mouths shut. 
Sorry that Mr. Rice. Do you have an explanation? Me, Your Honor? Yes, why wasn't the locker locked? Me, Your Honor? Yes, well, you see, this isn't exactly my field. What do you think, Miss Scientific Investigator? Huh? Oh, um, maybe something like jam the system sensor? Something jammed the sensor? Say, there's something else that seems out of place in this video. Yeah, I thought so too. There's got to be another clue somewhere in this footage. Very well, let's inspect the video once more. The locker wasn't locked. Mr. Wright, please point out the cause for this. Let's watch the video again. The noise bars don't, are like pretty decent on the fast forward here. This must be a pretty good video player. Boop. There's the reason, it's this thing. Please watch closely. This is the continuation of the part I showed you earlier. Yep, we gotta keep watching in real time. Can't fast forward or rewind or skip. Oh, what a wonderful case. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that glove fell out. There it is. What's this? Something white fell out of the locker. But sir, it's been my experience that things fall out when doors are opened. I often fall out and roll great distances when I my car door, sir. <laughs> we can't be sure that item was completely inside the locker to begin with. What do you mean? The sensor triggers the lock when the door is shut. What if something was inserted, say, between the sensor and the door? In inserted? Let's watch the footage again. I will get a drink. This white thing wasn't inside the locker. It was stuck between the door and the sensor. Oh, I understand now, sir. It's just like my tie. Two out of three times I get stuck in the door when I get out of my patrol vehicle, sir. Instead of the door closing, my tie chokes me. You don't have to be extremely thin, thin to fit in the door. Not only that, I also have to lock electrical currents. It would need to be an insulator. Yes, an insulator, but at the crime scene, this might have been something that fits the bill, this fits the description. <laughs> but, sir, by insulator you don't mean... I think I've finally got this figured out. Very well. Will the defense please present the relevant evidence? What was this insulator that was stuck in the locker door? Well, I mean, it's really easy to tell, because even though the video resolution still sucks, you can tell exactly what the object is in this version. Whereas it, it just looked like a white thing in the older versions of the game because the resolution of the screen was so much lower. But in this version, it's super obvious that it's this. If SL910 is so great, why is there no SL911? I found this near the locker, a thin rubber glove. We can't be sure that was in the victim's locker. It has a tag that says SL9 incident. It says SL911, it doesn't say incident. The video seems to depict the victim opening the locker, but that isn't the case. The lit lamp attests to this. On the day of the crime, even I could have opened that locker. Is that not so, Officer Meekins? Sir! What appears so, sir! Order! 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 So are we to believe, then, that the victim, whom this witness stabbed in the evidence room, was not Detective Goodman? Do no, not be misled, Your Honor. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? The defense has merely demonstrated that possibility and nothing more. The victim in the video was indeed Bruce Goodman. The prosecution will offer one more test to me to prove this. What? Officer Meekins, please testify about this. Sir, me, sir? I'm not sure what you're referring to, sir. Oh, what do you mean that, sir? Of course, sir. Is this a joke? Very well, begin your testimony. Mystery Man, two. 
as one of the thing that proves the man was Detective Goodman, sir. Enter the evidence room, one must use their ID card. When an ID card is used, there's a record of it. At the time of the crime, the detective had used his card. An ID card record, I see. I have the ID card record right here, Your Honor. The ID used at 514 is that of the victim. Just before the crime, hmm? Yes, without a doubt, this is the victim's ID. However, one thing does strike me as unusual. Several hundred cases should have been due for transferal. Why were there so few people using this room? This particular evidence room is only used for storing certain special cases. Special cases? Extremely violent cases involving police staff. Just hearing that makes my hair stand on end. Me too. Well, it doesn't make much of a difference. <laughs> get it? <laughs> there are only a few cases up for transferal there, and most were cleared up by noon. Right. I see. Now, let us move on to the cross-examination. Why does Detective Gumshoe have a locker in the evidence room for extremely violent cases involving police staff? And why does it have a picture of Maggie in it? Hmm. <laughs> okay, so the problem here is, right, the card, we have this card. At the prosecutor's office crime scene. So, it's not possible that Detective Goodman could have used it at the evidence room 30 minutes away. Because he was busy being killed in the other room. <laughs> Forget exactly what you're supposed to present, though. Hold it! Earlier, I believe you testified that when you asked the man to show his ID card, he pulled a knife on you. Yes, sir. He didn't show me any ID card, sir. Don't you think that's odd? I mean, if he had his ID card, all he had to do was show it to you. There wouldn't be any reason to draw a knife. Maybe he just panicked? Everything stems from contradiction. Let's point them out. Mr. Wright, what do you think? I'm confused. What? The problem with this ID card testimony is far too obvious. It's not like Edgeworth can miss something like this. They're thinking too hard about it. Come on, let's show them what we've got. I forget exactly what you're supposed to present. <laughs> So, unlike your early testimony, you believe this to be rock solid, do you? Yes, sir! Solid as stone, sir! If my hand wasn't wrapped in bandages, I'd even give the victory sign, sir! Couldn't he just use his other- Couldn't he just use his right hand for that? Let's hear him out fully. As we've seen, one never knows what he might say until the very last second. Hold it! Is that card hanging from your neck one of those ID cards? Yes, sir. This card right next to my cup, sir. I keep it here so I won't ever forget it. But what if someone were to steal it from you, keeping it out in the open like that? Maybe I shouldn't wear it around my neck. Remember when I said two times out of three my tie gets stuck when I got in my car? Well, the remaining time it's my ID card that gets stuck. Instead of the door closing, my ID card chokes me. Maybe I should just leave this one alone. At any rate, each police officer has only one ID card. Both the police department and the prosecutor's office can attest to this. Please proceed with your testimony. Let it be noted that this is the record the witness referred to. Let me see. Yes, that would be it. Detective Goodman. What's the matter? Uh, according to this... Mr. Edgeworth, your name is on here. So it is, Your Honor. Not that prosecutor again. Hey, maybe he's behind all this. Being a prosecutor, he could fight the evidence. Mommy, is that man in blue a murderer? Shh, don't stare at him. I've got the wrong color, kid. <laughs> it would seem the inquiry committee will want to speak with you again today. I have nothing to be ashamed of regarding my actions or their consequences. For now, let us continue with the cross-examination. Poor oh, Mr. Edgeworth, it must be so difficult for him. 
Alright, so we have the card, so... I think we can just object by giving... by showing the card itself? Objection! Yeah, the music stopped. Cool. Wait one moment, Officer Meekins. I'm not good at waiting, sir. I have the victim's ID card right here. I found it at the crime scene. That makes sense. When I say crime scene, I'm not referring to the evidence room at the police department. I mean the other crime scene. The underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. Your Honor, I have one more piece of evidence to present. It's a very important clue regarding the victim's ID card. A uh, lost item report? It's only half completed. But it shows that Detective Goodman had lost something on the day of the crime. Something important enough to fill out this report. Let me guess, you believe there's something to be his ID card, right? I can't say for sure, but there is a high probability. On the day of the crime, Detective Goodman was not carrying his card. Order, order! So now, what does this all mean? It can only mean one thing. It doesn't even require much thought. The man of a Samitans encountered in the evidence room was not Detective Goodman, but rather the man who stole his ID card. Order! 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 Does the prosecution have a response? I have only one thing to say to the defence. Bravo, Mr. Wright. B bravo Allow me to summarise the defence's argument. At 5.15pm on the day of the crime, the man in the evidence room Officer Meekins encountered was not Detective Goodman. There are two grounds to support this. First, the locker in the evidence room was already unlocked. Second, the victim lost his ID card. Am I correct so far, Mr. Wright? Yes? What's he up to? That being the case, we must inevitably arrive at a single conclusion. If the victim in this video is a fake, then the murder in the evidence room is also fake. In other words, the security camera does not show the instant of the murder. Uh... That is... well, I guess that's right. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Only moments ago you seemed content to be pointing your finger around. This isn't going to end well. Well, well. It seems you've finally realised exactly what you've gone to such lengths to prove. Explain yourself, Mr. Edgeworth. The defence has already done the explaining for me. The victim in this video is fake, which means this a murder did not take place at the police department at 5.15 on the day of the crime. So... So the real crime could only take place at one location, the underground parking lot, at the prosecutor's office, the murderer being Ms. Lana Sky, the defendant. The evidence is compelling. A trustworthy witness observed the moment the defendant used the murder weapon. Ah! I knew that testimony was way too shabby. It was all a trap from the very beginning. The activity in the evidence room still leaves many questions unanswered. Who exactly was the victim of his Meekins encounter? And where did this person disappear to? However, this trial's purpose is to examine only the murder of Detective Goodman. Just so, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, you have to do something, or else Lana... What do I do? How am I supposed to get myself out of this mess? Objection! One moment, Your Honor. What now, Mr. Wright? Don't tell me you're objecting to what you've just proven. Of course not. But I almost walked right into the prosecution's trap. What are you talking about? This cross-examination has proven one thing and one thing only. The security video did not show the actual murder. Yep, sure didn't. <laughs> I'm so tired of seeing this video. Hello? 
However, it cannot be said that it is unrelated to the murder in the parking lot. Specifically, large amounts of blood traces were found in the evidence room. The defense demands further examination to the truth of the matter. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor? If this court were to examine this further, other witnesses will be necessary. Is the prosecution prepared? I'm sorry, Your Honor. The prosecution considered the incident in the police department to be unrelated. We have not prepared any other witnesses for this incident. This just might be my chance. Time to call a certain Texas Ranger to the stand. Mr. Wright, do you mean... Your Honor, the defense would like to request a specific witness. Oh? Whom do you have in mind? Someone we have reason to believe knows the truth. The truth behind the activities that took place in the evidence room. The prosecution requests to hear this person's name before deciding whether or not to comply. Very well then, Mr. Wright. This person whom you would have testified. What is his or her... his or her? Their name. Come on, judge. God. I know everyone involved in this case is... It uses he or she, but come on! <sighs> Let's go. Officer Jake Marshall. By him. I can't really to know everything just yet. He's in charge of the evidence room. I fear we should hear what he has to say. Prosecution agrees to the defense's request. Since he was responsible for guarding the room, we should hear his testimony. Fortunately, he works in the police department. We shouldn't need longer than 20 minutes to prepare. Very well. The court will take a 30 minute recess while the witnesses sub po 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 ponade sub su sub sub I don't know how to pronounce that. Sub ponade? Will the prosecution please prepare the witness during this time? We will, Your Honor. Court is now in recess. February 24th, 11.32am, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. There's no stopping you, is there, Mr. Wright? Huh? What do you mean? He called for Jake Marshall. It seems you've figured everything out. Uh, I haven't figured anything out. Lana, you're the one who knows everything. Emma. You always know everything. Why don't you just tell us? Mr. Wright is trying his hardest to protect you. I... I don't recall ever asking for his protection. How can you be so cold? Don't you trust us? Don't you trust... me? I hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Oh. I guess I am. I'll come back later. Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You've got a lot of nerve, pal, making a detective run all around while on duty. And to top it off, you call me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. Sorry, Detective. You better be, pal. Hey, hey, hey! Hey, hey! I didn't see you there, Chief Prosecutor Sky. That's okay. So, have you brought what I asked? Oh, oh ho, oh ho, oh ho, oh ho, oh ho, oh ho, oh You mean this, right? My apologies, Detective. Due to my present circumstances, I was forced to use Mr. Wright's name when making my request. My name? You never in a million years where I thought it was you who asked me. Can I bother you to bring with the S on my incident files? I'll need them by noon. Talk about crazy. The SL9 incident. But Lana, that's... I thought Mr. Wright might need them, so I had them brought here. Here, you might do well to read them. I can't believe you, the Chief Prosecutor, were a witness in that case. This guy was a witness? The SI incident files at it, received from the line of Sky. Take it from me, you don't want anything to do with serial murders. Murders. Oh, what? Now I've brought you your stuff? He's gonna ignore me? Uh, Ema? But why? Why is your name in here? What? My name's in there? I, I don't know. 
Unless... No, it couldn't be. Fauna, this is the line incident. Is that... That's the classification number the police filed it under. Two years ago, the rest of the world knew it as... The Joe Dark killings. Uh, Joe Dark. No, no, Lana. That's over with. No! Emo, wait. She ran away. Uh, you know what? I just remembered I gotta be somewhere. Sorry, pal, but I'm out of here. Jake Marshall, Angel Star, Damon Gant, Miles Edgeworth. Not to mention Lana and Emo. Everyone involved in this case connected to those killings two years ago. This can't be just a coincidence. Knowing you, you just might be able to figure it out. Time to get back to the trial, Mr. Wright. Best of luck. Go take a good look at this file. To be continued. And that's it for this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, next time... Well, second half of the trial, there'll be a lot of Detective Marshall. Oh, sorry, Officer Marshall, he's not a detective anymore. Poor guy. Jake Marshall, uh, and yeah, we'll discover some more about the case. Uh, we've now discovered what the SL9 incident was, and that Ema was involved in it, which is a bit of a revelation, perhaps? Um, we'll see how we go. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Bye!